So for this video, we're just going to be building a login system using Google's Firebase. So we click on the browser icon in the top right. We click the sign in button. We're greeted with all the options. For this video, we're just using the Google and the GitHub. You could absolutely do this with Facebook, Twitter, email, and phone. For this video, just the Google and GitHub. So let's sign in with Google and then the, uh, the GitHub. So we click this option. We're greeted with the OAuth2 endpoint page. Click on my account, enter the password. And then we're redirected to our little page here, waiting five seconds. Let's not wait, let's just close it. Click the icon, click the diamond, we're signed out. Let's sign back in with our GitHub. So again, the OAuth2 endpoint page for GitHub, authorize, redirect to the page, wait five seconds, let's not wait. Click off, click on, diamond, sign out. And so if this interests you at all, stick around, let's begin. So let's start off with going to console.firebase.google.com. We click on create project. Let's name it FB OAuth2. Name it whatever you want. Click continue. We don't need the analytics. So click that off unless you need it for your app. We create a project. So we'll click on the, uh, the continue. Uh, we're going to need to create an app here. So there's iOS, there's Android, and there's a web app. So let's click on the web app. We'll register, let's call it the Chrome extension. Um, I don't know, OAuth2. We don't need the Firebase hosting unless you need it. Register the app. And it's gonna give us some startup code for our JavaScript. We're gonna need this later, but we can always come back to it. So just scroll down, navigate to the continue to the console, and let's go to the authentication uh, SDK. So we'll click on the authentication, we'll click on the sign in method, and let's enable some guys. So these are the, uh, the options that Firebase allows you to use for your uh, custom sign in pages. We just need the Google, so let's click on this. Slide to enable. Let's uh, enter some sort of support email. I'm gonna do mine right there, we'll click on the save. Let's go down to the GitHub, we'll click this. We need a client ID and a client secret. And we have this, uh, this custom redirect URI. So just navigate over to your GitHub or wherever you're doing, like your Twitter or your, uh, your Facebook. You need to find their developer console. For GitHub, it's on their icon down at the settings. We click on the developer settings. We'll click on the OAuth apps. We'll register a new application. Let's call it the, uh, the Chrome extension OAuth2. Homepage URL. This would be homepage for your uh, your business or whatever the app is. Um, you don't really need this to be an official thing. You could do like yahoo.com, I think, or whatever. This is important. The authorization callback URL. That's this guy right here. So we'll copy this. We'll paste this here. And we'll just paste this here for now. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. We'll register the application. There we go. So the client ID and the client secret right here. So let's copy the client ID. There we go. I would enable first. There we go. Let's copy the client secret. And there we go. So we'll save. So we've just enabled the Google and the, uh, the GitHub. Let's scroll down to add domain. We need to whitelist our Chrome extension. So it's gonna be, what's the, it's gonna be chrome-extension colon slash slash and it's just going to be the ID of the Chrome extension. So go to your Chrome colon slash slash extensions uh, URL in your browser, copy the ID, and we'll paste that right there. Click on add, and we'll scroll down, and we'll change this one account per email address. This means that if they sign in to your Chrome app using their Google account, and they try and sign into your Chrome app using their Facebook or the Twitter, it won't allow them uh, for this tutorial, we want to allow that behavior, so we need to change this behavior here. Uh, changing the setting will affect your app sign-in flow. That's okay. We'll just do the allow creation of multiple accounts with the same email address. We'll click the save, and there we go. We're basically set up to use the uh, the Firebase SDK now. Just go back to the, uh, the home page here. All right, so let's go over the Chrome extension and then I'll walk you through the, uh, the manifest and the, the workflow or the logic flow. All right, so let's go through the, uh, the manifest and the, uh, the workflow or the logic flow of the Chrome extension. 
So let's start with this guy manifest right here. All right, so name standard, description standard, version, all this stuff is standard. We're not using the options page. We're using the pop-up page. This guy's really important right here, this content. Let me do this. Content security policy. So by default, the version 2 of a Chrome extension won't allow you to use CDNs. And CDNs are just ways of linking a script that links to other scripts and downloads libraries for you. And so by default, your manifest version 2 of your Chrome extension will not allow this behavior. So to whitelist the domains or the CDNs, we need to use a key or a property called content security policy. So I'm gonna have a link in, or not a link, but I'll copy and paste this piece of code in the descriptions below. So script source of self, that's the Chrome extension, and then three, three, uh, these three domains, CDN Firebase, APIs Google, GStatic, and then afterwards an object source of self. Again, I'll just copy and paste this, uh, this code in the description below. So it just allows us to link a the Firebase SDK or the CDNs, and then Firebase can download all the stuff it needs. So that's the manifest. Let's go through the the uh, the workflow or logic flow of the Chrome extension. Let's do it uh, so visually first, and then we'll go into the code. So when we click on this icon, we're going to be greeted with a sign-in page like that. When we click that sign-in page, which is right here. When you click that sign in button, we'll be greeted with all of the options for the user to sign in. Once they're signed in, they'll have a page like this. So if they're signed in, they'll have a page like this. They'll click on this uh, little diamond and they'll be signed out. That's the basic workflow of the, uh, of the Chrome extension. Let's go to the code. So when they first click on that icon, they'll be greeted with the pop-up HTML. We'll have a script that runs to see whether or not the user is actually signed in. If they're signed in, it will show that welcome page, which allows them to sign out, or the main page. If they're not signed in, it gives them the sign in page, which is right here. Once they sign in, we'll give them a welcome page like this, which just tells them they're signed in and it times out. After five seconds, it'll just close itself like that. So we'll go back to the code. And let's write this script right here. So we're just going to go through the extension and we're just going to do all the little code things and then we'll hop back into the actual, the meat of the video, which is the Firebase uh, integration. So pop up init.h.js right here. So the init function, we need to check whether or not the user is signed in. If they are, show them the main page. If they're not, allow them to sign in. So we're just going to send a message to the background asking whether or not the user signed in. So chrome.runtime.send message. We'll send a message of is user signed in. We'll get a response. And we'll just say if the response, response.message is equal to success. So that's just whether or not the backend got the message. We need to check whether or not the user is actually signed in. So we're going to send the sign in status status to this page. So it's going to be in the response that payload. It's going to be a true or false. So if the message got received and the response dot payload, specifically the payload is true, which means the user signed in, we'll just show them the main page. So we'll just do a window.location. We'll do a replace with and it'll just be the slash main.html. So we just sent this message to the back end. Let's code for it in the back end. So that's in the background.js. So let's start off with a, uh, a variable that lets us track whether or not the user signed in or their status. So let's say user signed in. We'll set it to false. Let's, let's uh, code our if conditional listener tree. So chrome.runtime.onMessage.add listener. Three things, the request coming in, the sender of that request, and the ability to send a response to the sender. So we'll say if the request.message is equal to is user signed in, we're gonna send a response of message success, and the payload is just the true or false value of whether or not they're signed in like that. There we go, let me do a return true right here. So let's test this guy out. Is user signed in? Is user signed in perfect? So refresh the extension. The user signed in is false, so we should get the uh, the sign in page. There we go. Let's go back here, change this guy to true. 
we should get the main page, which has that diamond in it. Refresh, click, perfect. Now when we click the sign out button, nothing happens. We want to redirect to the sign in page. So let's go back to our Chrome extension. That script for the main would be the main script right here. When we click the button, we're going to send a message to the back end. Dot send message. AJ. And that message will be, let's make that message sign out. It'll be a response. And we'll say, if the response.message is equal to success, we don't need any sort of payload for this guy, so success, S-U-C-C-E-S-S, then we're just going to redirect the user to the sign-in page. So window.location, and once they're signed in, we don't want them to be able to do a, a back or a navigation back to... Uh, yeah, so it should be replace. Window.location.replace. Let's just do with the initial popup.html. So we just sent a message to the back end signing us out. Let's code for that. So we'll go back to our background script. Let's do a, another branch of our conditional tree. Else if the request.message is equal to sign underscore out. All we're going to do is, what are we going to do? User signed in is equal to false. And let me do this, set this back to false. Actually, we need to do this so we can test the page out. User signed in is equal to false. We'll just send a response of message, S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. There we go. Let's test out that, uh, that main page. Let's go back here, refresh, click, click. There you go, sign in. Let's put it back to a default of false here. Let's move on to the meat of this uh, this extension, which is the default pop-up uh, script right here. Pop-up script, and this guy right here, sign in. All right, so we need to go back over to our Firebase stuff. We need to copy a bunch of code, which is cool because we don't have to write it ourselves. So we need to initialize the SDK first. So go back to your Firebase console. You click on the app right here. Click on that gear, we scroll down, and we need this code right here. So copy all this, let me just copy there. And we need to put it in two places. So let's go to the pop-up HTML. We need to link the CDNs in the header of the HTML. So just paste that here. But what we can't do, we can, but in Chrome extension manifest version two, it's not suggested you do it this way. What's suggested is you link your scripts externally like this. And so we need this line right here. This is the CDN that downloads the Firebase app. And I'll discuss this in two seconds. So the Firebase app, it downloads that from the CDN. We're going to link some libraries, which is what I'm going to discuss in a second. And we can't write script like this in our HTML, given the manifest version two. We need to link it externally. So what we can do is copy this stuff out, put that in our pop-up script like this, we can delete all of this. There we go. Just delete. Actually, I want. Yeah, I'll delete these. Go back here. It's a bit of formatting. We'll do a const here. We don't need this comment. All right. So this line just downloads the SDK. This does not give us access to any of Firebase's abilities, their libraries, any of this stuff right here authentication, their Firestore database stuff, their performance, Crashlytics, all this stuff doesn't come with this guy right here. If we did this, this would automatically give us the ability to use all of these guys right here. It would download these libraries. We don't need all of these libraries. The file size, I don't know what it is, but it's a lot larger than just downloading this library right here. So for that reason, we do Firebase app. You go here. Now let's go back up. Right here, Firebase app, and then we manually download the libraries we need, specifically this authentication library. Now we can find the link for this CDN back over here. So in your app, your gear, we go down here, there's a link to libraries right here. So copy this guy. Copy, let's do a paste right here. 
and we'll click on the available Firebase JS SDKs from the CDN. We just want this library, the authentication. There's all these libraries here, push notifications, all that stuff. We just want the authentication guy. So copy this guy. We can close this window, go back here, and just link that library just like that. So that's set up for the SDK, the authentication library we need. Now we need some way of displaying the options to the user. So I'm going to have a link in the description to this site or this URL. It helps us set up. We're going to just copy and paste a lot of code. So before we begin, we're going to download or link the Firebase UI as well as the style sheet for it. This is what's going to show to the user. We don't have to write the code ourselves, so copy this. We paste it in the header as well. There we go. And that's good for the header. So we've downloaded the SDK, the library we're going to need, as well as the library for displaying it to the user. So we can close this. We can go back to this page, scroll all the way down to, where is it, sign in, here. So we're going to initialize the widget, so we'll copy this. We'll go into the actual script. We'll paste that here. Let's not do a var, let's do a const. And I'll leave the comments for this. And then we'll need, oh, so I forgot to show you guys. You need some HTML in that page that allows Firebase to hook into and show the options. So let me go back here very quickly. So our pop-up page, the actual HTML is relatively, this just makes it look pretty. The actual HTML is four lines or five lines, four lines. That's the sign in button. That's completely on us. What Firebase needs is a div that allows it to show all the options. Name it whatever you want. I named mine sign in options. For their example, they named theirs Firebase UI auth container. So mine is whatever, sign in options. So that's what this stuff says here. We don't need any of this. We go to the UI config. We can copy all this. Let me close this paste the UI config here, and I'll go over all of this in a second. Let me change this to const. Uh, const, there we go. And now we need to, when the user clicks that sign in button, should have closed that, my sign in button has the ID of my sign in, ID my sign in, ID my sign in. So I'm going to do a document dot get element by ID, my sign in, now listen for a click, so add event listener, click, and once they click, scroll up a bit, then we're going to initialize that Firebase UI. So that's the last bit of code we need to copy. So we'll go down here, copy this guy right here, paste that right here. So once they click, we're going to run Firebase's little UI. It's going to do all the work for us. We just need to give it the div of the... Uh, that they're going to use to insert all that stuff. So that was, what did I call it? A short-term memory. What did I call it? Sign in options. Sign in options. And of course, we feed in the UI config, which we'll talk about now. So let's uh, just go line by line. So callbacks. When we've successfully signed in, if we return true, it'll automatically redirect the user to this URL here. The thing about a Chrome extension is it's not running its own server. So you can't redirect to your Chrome extension. You can't redirect to something like this, uh, I don't know, HTTPS, and then it would be maybe your the extension ID, dot chromium app dot org. That doesn't actually exist externally. You can also, you, know, you can't also do something like this, extension colon slash slash and then the ID of your extension. So there's no way to actually redirect to your Chrome extension. So for that reason, we can just comment that out and we don't want to return true. We return false and we'll do our own little redirection in here. Let me delete this stuff. So that's the sign in successful with auth results. And of course it gives you the redirect URL, which we don't really need because we can't do with the Chrome extension. And it gives you like information from that OAuth2 endpoint. So this is always going to be a bit different based on how they signed in. Twitter has their own little package it gives you. GitHub has its own little package. It's always going to be different. And so the UI is shown. Once we tell Firebase to show all of those options, it's on us to clean up the page. So what you typically do is when they click the sign in button and then Firebase shows all the options, if we don't hide, hide the sign in button, they're going to see the sign in button as well as the options. 
So again, what you typically do is just hide that stuff. So my sign in, you go here. My sign in button has my underscore sign in. So let's just do this. My underscore sign underscore in, and then we just hide it with the uh, the none. That's all you really need to do for this app at least. So UI shown, save that, and sign in flow. Now should I discuss this one? So sign in flow has a pop up and a redirect. Um, Chrome extensions are a bit unique. You cannot use redirect if you have your sign in page as the browser icon. If we pop up a new page for the user, so something that looks like, should I do it? Let me do it quickly, just to show you guys. So we're gonna need page action, browser action. We'll do window. Let's go to background. Let's go here. Let's do chrome.window, I think it's dot create. Actually, let me listen for it first. Chrome dot browser action dot, uh, what was it, on clicked dot add listener. We'll do a function. Let's do this. Let's do, is it Chrome windows dot create? It might be windows. We'll see if it gives me an error. Create. And the URL, let me just do, what was it going to be? Just pop up dot HTML. And let's just do width of 300 pixels. Let's do a height of 600. And we'll do a focus of true, focused of true. And so if we're using this guy, so let me just explain before I change a bit more code. When we click on the browser icon, we have a sign in. We can't use the redirect authorization flow. You can't redirect within this window, but we can redirect within a created window. So let me go to manifest. Let me default pop up. No, default pop up. All right, let's do boom, 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 boom. Refresh the extension. Let me clear the error. Click. There you go. So we can do a redirect within this window here. You can't do a redirect within a browser window or a browser icon window. So for that reason, let's keep within the, it looks better when we do the browser icon. So for that reason, we're just going to keep up the, or keep the pop-up flow or the sign-in flow to pop up and not redirect. So let's go back here. Let me delete all this. Actually, whatever, in case you guys want to copy that, I'll just leave that there. And what's the error we're getting? Add event listener of null. Get element by ID, my sign in. Oh, I see. Pop up here. ID, we don't need the hashtag there. There we go. All right, so that was the sign in flow. Sign in successful, the redirect URI. We don't need that for Chrome extension. We can't use that. Sign in option. So this is how you would tell Firebase which options to give the user. Currently we have Google, Facebook, Twitter. We're only using GitHub and Google, but I'll leave these guys on so you can see what they are. Um, should I? I'll come back to this because we're going to add some properties to this. But just understand we can either enter it like this, or we can enter it with a uh, as an object with custom options. I'll come back to it later. The terms of service, privacy policy, URL, that's all up to you. If your business or your app has a terms of service, you would link it here. So when the user clicks on that stuff, they'll be redirected to your uh, your company or your app's stuff. We don't need it for this app. So let me uncomment this, uncomment this. And that's about it for the config. Let's see if this thing works. Background. Actually, it's not going to work here. So let's do this first before it's going to work here. Let me do this. Refresh. Click. Of course, because I need to put it back here. Pop up. What is it? Pop up. Dot HTML. Save. Back. Refresh. Sign in. There you go. That's, those are all the options. Obviously, we can't use the Twitter or the uh, email. Sign in with the phone. Sign in with Google. Let's click on my account. I'm already signed into my browser, so I don't need to enter the password and stuff. And notice nothing happened. That's because we didn't code for anything here. Pop up script here. All we did was return false. So what we're going to do, once they've signed in successfully, we want to show them, what is this, chrome.runtime. So we're going to send a message to the back end saying, hey, they've signed in successfully. Can you please sign them into our Chrome app? So we're going to do a message of sign in. 
we'll get a function of a response. There we go. And we'll say if the response dot message is equal to success, CCESS, then we'll do a, what are we gonna do? We'll do a window dot location, the replace of, we'll show them that welcome page that times out, so welcome.html. So you just send a message to the back end of sign in. Let's code for that on the back end. Let me close this. So right here we'll do a else if. So else if the request.message is equal to, and that was sign in. All we're gonna do is flip the user status to sign in, which is true, and we'll send a response of success. Message of S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S, like that. And let me do a semicolon format. Looks good. This looks good as well. All right, let's do that again. So go back, refresh the extension, and something's going to happen that I'll explain. So I click on the sign in. Let's sign in with Google. So I'm signed in. Notice I didn't get the option to sign in with my account or flip to a different account. We need to go into the UI config and change this. So we're signed in. Let me just click this again. So now we're signed in. We click this, we're signed out. Click sign in. Click the uh, sign in with Google. And it automatically signs me in. Let's not have that behavior. So let's go back to the code and right here. So there's an option of uh, linking these or giving Firebase what you want in terms of these variables, these constants, provider IDs or you can have an object with the provider ID. So what we're gonna do is objects. So we'll do this. That's gonna be for the Google, and this guy will be for the GitHub. So two things we're concerned with. The provider, which is just the Google guy. There we go. And within this, there's gonna be, what is it called? Uh, custom parameters. And within this, we're concerned with something called the prompt. For Google, it's, uh, I'll explain, let me write it and then I'll explain it. Select account, there you go. And for our GitHub, we'll do a provider of, and that was just the GitHub, which is down here. And custom parameters, another object, let me scroll up. And the prompt is consent. Now, why is the prompt for this select account and the prompt for this consent? Delete these two lines. All right, so the way Firebase works for this OAuth 2 stuff is it's just working as like a middleman or a proxy for ringing or pinging these guys their OAuth 2 endpoints. And so each endpoint is going to be different in how they, the language of their endpoint. For GitHub, their prompt in order to get the user to sign in every time, the value they accept is consent. That value is different for Google. Apparently they... They, uh, they accept select account as the value. So we're just adding in custom parameters for Firebase to send to the Google OAuth2 endpoint and the GitHub OAuth2 endpoint. And so I don't know what these guys use, but you're going to have to research and look up based on their, uh, their developer docs what their values are for, con for, uh, for prompts and stuff like that. So that's why these two guys are different. It does the same thing. It's just the value they accept is different. So now that we have that, let's go back and we'll test. So refresh, click on the icon, sign in, and should allow me to sign in with my account. And it didn't. Why is that? Let's go back here. Provider, that's cool. Custom, oh, not customer, sorry, not customer prop or parameters. It should be custom parameters. There we go. Let's save, go back, refresh the extension. Let's click, sign in, sign in with Google. There we go. Click once. Let's sign out. Sign in again with Google. Allow me to sign in. There we go. Let's sign in with GitHub now. So let's uh, sign out. Sign in. Let's do a sign in with GitHub. We'll do an authorize. There we go. There we go. So we can sign in with both guys. And again, you're going to have to do your own research as to how these OAuth 2 endpoints work, but it's largely the same, just minor variations. And so that's going to be it for this video. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the, uh, the next one.